My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. This is the R&B Money Podcast, the authority on all things R&B. Yes, it is. The R&B Money Podcast. What is it? Is youthful. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Yeah. It we is. tap into the new generation. Yeah. The new sound. In a real way. The new gifts. Uh huh. New excellence. Yeah. You better have dreadlocks or something. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, dye your tips. Like, like, Come like on now. <laughs> the, 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 the brother we got on here now. Has been a superstar since he was a huh. children. This man has been victorious. <laughs> he been victorious as, as, as a childster. You understand what I'm saying? What is a now he's an adult. A childster? Yes, a children. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's an adult. Yeah. And he kicking everybody ass. Make some noise for the brother Leon Thomas in the family. Yeah, what's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was an amazing intro, by the way. Thank you, man. Come I appreciate on, man. I got that. you, yeah, brother. Yeah, you know, that was you fly. You want to kick off your next album? Yeah, I mean, if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hit you up, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, bro, first of all, thank you. Um, thank you for your time. You know what I mean? Um, we know you are working. Man. That's what we do know. Yeah. Man, but thank you so much for having me, yeah, man. I've actually absolutely. been watching the podcast. Yeah. Y'all are so fucking funny. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you, you're, you're we, we commend you, brother, because, you know, this is a tough place to grow up in. Absolutely. A very tough place to grow up in. And and from the first time we've crossed paths, like, you can tell that you were raised well. You know yeah, I mean, saying? shout out to my mama. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just came from a really amazing musical tribe mm -hmm. that just surrounded me with love and support. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny. I'm around a lot of artists and, and, and to hear that sometimes their parents weren't supportive early mm -hmm. on, you know, it's kind of crazy to me because I don't know a world that that, that isn't that. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I feel like really having God in my life, too, has really yeah. helped just keep we, things we, smooth. You know, know with, 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 with in, that, in that parental space, right? Sometimes I think of it like this. As, as most of us maybe, I know, our first generation mm. to this place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so our parents... When you start talking about dreaming of this kind of life, right? They're like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, Walgreens has some openings right now. Yeah, <laughs> Walmart yeah. they stocking boxes right now for well, twenty two dollars an hour. There are no openings in artistry. There's in no being an artist. Yeah, yeah. There's I no want, guarantee. There's an opening. There's an opening to be a superstar. Yeah. Or to be on. You know, it just doesn't. And yeah, so yeah. we're pulling this out of the air. By being right. first generation, that dream sounds so. In a real life crazy right to most people you know what i mean wow. and the parents that you know haven't lived the crazy lifestyle mm -hmm. they they just don't get it until they see it and thank god you know you were surrounded with parents and people who who at least had the music yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, to, absolutely to nurture you and and, and get mm -hmm. you prepared As a matter of fact let's start there let's go back to the yeah. beginning yeah. you know what's crazy my grandfather just flew out yesterday mm -hmm. and we were uh talking about just just his whole journey in music and he started naming names of people that he was around he was talking about cab calloway mm. he was talking about miles davis you know yeah. he was talking about leonard bernstein you know i mean this this guy he he was an amazing opera singer on in in the 1960s and to be black and and to your be, grandfather yeah wow. to 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 be in that place was you like wasn't really supposed special. to be in that place yeah, yeah. i was very yeah. special around What's that your time grandfather's name? john anthony john yeah anthony. okay wow. so i mean every time he comes into town and, and even when i traveled to new york you know i spend most of my time just asking questions I mean, how did he stay sane through all of the different changes and, yeah. and, and, and even being in a position where, you know, the civil rights movement was going on mm -hmm. and, 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 and genuinely having to kind of keep a level head during so much climate, you know, just 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 a, a wild climate at that time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because your reaction yeah. could at that time get you killed. It could get you straight killed. Yeah. yeah. So and, he was and yeah. he was in a place where, I mean, of course, we know he belonged, but mm -hmm. you're singing yeah. opera? 
And I mean, he was working with the Poor People's March and he was telling me a story yesterday about how uh, James Brown came through to do a free concert in this tent that they set up. Um, and, and that's just so cool to me. Like yeah. he was really chopping it up with James Brown back in the day, like, you know, at his greatest. Because I mean, whenever he comes through and he's in my car, I always like to play like some old school funky, you know, just kind of vibe out. But yeah. So, so let's go back to the beginning to where, you yeah. know, you as all things that you are, right? Right. Somebody was like, that, that boy right there, I'm telling you right there, that boy gonna be something. Or even when you said to yourself, I think I, I, think I got something special. Well, it, it, it's a pretty crazy story because I was 10 years old and, and, and my mom, she's also a singer as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she was doing a really cool show uh, and took me to a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And her friend was like, you should audition for The Lion King. And that was my first ever audition. Um, I went in and, and you know, just did out my of the thing. Blue, you should audition for the like. Well, I mean, I was just a charismatic you? kid, uh -huh. you know, running around and, and it was a rehearsal. So I'm like kind of humming and, and yeah. singing and just being, you know, myself. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, you know, I, I ended up doing the audition, got the first audition and ended up doing Broadway at 10 years old. And for me, like to go from just being a regular kid to like, you know, starring on Broadway in front of like 400 people, packed house, um, and seeing the reaction of, of of the you know people in the crowd, I mean, you can kind of see behind the lights, but for the most part, I just remember seeing you know the front row and and just seeing the joy on people's faces. That was the moment where I knew I was like, okay, this How is. How many shows are you doing a week? I was doing at that time four, but I did three Broadway plays in three years. So the other ones I was doing, I was doing like eight shows a week, and. Um, you know, once I kind of got into the, the, the space of theater, mm -hmm. um, it just made a lot of sense. You know, shout out to uh, Linda Twine. She was a musical director for a lot of the big plays at that time. And mm -hmm. she went way back with my grandfather, too. So there was like a bit of a family aspect to it. So it kind of felt like fun. It was like a playground for me. But um, Broadway is no joke. You got to you got to show up. He better show out. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you one time to do you going to it. school exactly. as well at this time or no? Yeah, you know, I'm going to school. I'm waking up. I'm going to school. Uh, you know, I do my homework in the afternoon and then I'm, you know, going backstage and I'm doing a show. I'm waking up. I'm doing it all over again. Sometimes I would have a matinee on Wednesday. I would get a half day. Got to do homework backstage. Yeah, it was, That's crazy. It was pretty crazy. I should have been homeschooled at that time, but I was still in public school just doing me. So so how is, how is I mean... I was never in school and famous, so how is it being in school and being on Broadway at the same time? Are you what letting your, the kids know that? that yeah, what is your school? swag like, because like most in school? Kids, like like you, in, in that age group, which is fourth, fifth grade, mm -hmm. yeah. do they even know what Broadway is? They don't. So like, okay, you know, okay. for the younger years, uh, I'll say like middle school, it was kind of just like whatever. It wasn't until I started doing like movies. Mm -hmm. I did a film with um, Robin Williams called August Rush. And would you, uh, would you do the film with again? Robin Williams. Yeah. 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 Legend. Terrence Howard was yeah. in that film yeah. too, man. And oh. Iron Man, man. And yeah. Iron Man, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Iron Man, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, like, and, and, and that one still, like, it took like two years for it to come out. So I was telling my friends, like, yeah, you're going to see me in the movies. And they were like, I ain't gonna see you with no movie, you know. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. it was still that element, and you know, being in Brooklyn too, you know, it, it was just such a grounded situation. You know, mm -hmm. I was going to a, a, a very public school, <laughs> like it wasn't one of those fancy, you know, art schools or anything. Um, so I really got a lot of balance, and my friends were always very supportive. Mm -hmm. And I think once the Nickelodeon stuff started happening, I noticed going on the train was different. Like, you know, people kind of looking at me or even going to school and people treat me different than they you did before. You're on like, Nickelodeon and still taking the train to school and doing the whole... Yeah, man. That's I New mean, York, bro. That's, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not going to... They different in New York. <laughs> hey, yo, son. <laughs> is that true? That's true. Literally, yeah. Hey, hey, I thought I was about to get robbed hey, B, and my boy at, just look, wanted to look pick. Look at who it is, B. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What you got them, on you, son? I guess them checks ain't come in, huh, no. son? Exactly. You know, you're here with us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, bro. Just try and make it work. What you really? got on B what's that what yeah. you <laughs> he said I thought they was gonna rob me I like your I style know, I really son. did bro like the first couple times I got recognized I, I really thought I was about to get robbed but it was all love and that was a cool thing. I felt you start like realizing that the thugs watch Nickelodeon. Yeah, <laughs> they, no, they really watch Nickelodeon, man. At yeah. this point, I'm definitely good in slime. any hood. But, but you know what it is though, too. Like <laughs> guys don't necess necessarily know how to soften up to show love. 
So it's aggression <laughs> either way. Either you know way. what I'm saying? So either it way. all feels the same. Absolutely. A robbing yeah. or a salute. You still feel like yeah, you getting pressed. You still feel like you're getting pressed. <laughs> like getting pressed. That's funny. I had to learn that early. Right. Because dudes, right. dudes would be looking at me and I'm like, yeah, what's nigga, up? what is you looking at? Yeah, what's for happening? real. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, I love your music, nigga. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, okay, well, Thank you, man. Well, thank you, brother. Maybe I deserve too. Maybe I deserve, nigga. That's some that's some good shit, nigga. Yeah, maybe a smile, brother. Like, like you know, anything, something like, like just a little. And so it took me a while just to get used to that, right, and, and right, to like, yeah. and to be more welcoming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See yeah. somebody looking like this. What up, brother? How you doing, man? Nah, I definitely took time because I'm really from Brooklyn. So no, you I, I really, was really from ready, there. like my daughters. Yeah. My daughters grew up in New York. Oh, word, so they, word. they came up in Harlem. Yes, yeah, dope. And so my um my oldest went to PPAS. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a went, great school. Yeah, she went to uh, she went Harlem School of the Arts, okay, and she yeah. was on the Metro Metropolitan Opera. Wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they was catching the train early. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, so where are you going? Oh, we on the train. Just goes. Yeah. You you're barely a teenager. This is what yeah, we do in New York. But I mean, it's just you know, I, I how you get around. I've yeah. never been on the train in New York. Really? You never. gotta do it at least once or twice. Once. Man. My son made me do it. Yeah, you should. My son made me do it because really? he said that's where the Ninja Turtles were. <laughs> he was he was younger. He's older now. Yeah. I ain't put you on blast, dude. But you thought she was going to see a Ninja Turtle. Sure. <laughs> I mean, it is I would have, if Zion said he yeah. was, I would have. Yeah. It is what he was. Yeah. He was yeah. little, bro. He, was, yeah, he wanted to that. see the Ninja Turtles. Nah, that's like, funny. We probably not going to see him. Are we going to see a drunk nigga dressed up as a turtle? Nigga, but we what? <laughs> Damn. With green pantyhose on, oh, it get no. different. Nah, the, it's definitely different. What is train what is York. that about? As you as you as you are a New Yorker, yeah. What is it about the train that makes niggas get? And I'm not saying niggas in terms of just men, women, and just get wild and beside themselves. What is that about? Well, first off, there's like six million people smacked into this very small location. So you're dealing with all types of cultures and, you know, mental health issues all being crammed onto a very small train. You know, I, it's it's very possible that shit's going to get real. But you what do they want to do? It's always there. It's always there. Because right. that's, that's, the, that's the meeting spot. Like, I mean, it, 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 maybe that's the meeting spot. Yeah. Maybe. It's, yeah. it's act yeah. a full maybe. day. Yeah. Let's and, go and to the train. think about it. Know. You've done whatever you've done in your job all day. And maybe you've had enough. Yeah. When you get on the show. <laughs> maybe you've you had, had enough. enough. That's really <laughs> what it is. Enough. You're tired. And you're dealing you're with a lot tired. of bullshit, man. Yeah. I've yeah. had enough. Yeah. I just don't I just don't want to be on the train. And right. that crack off. And that crack off. Nah, plenty of fights. Cause yeah, I'm shit gets real. I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm zero to a hundred. Right. right. I'm going straight to a hundred. Cause nah, I wanna get off the train. <laughs> Word, <laughs> but you ain't going nowhere, but, bro. You gotta wait to the next stop. I wanna make listen, listen. I'm I'm the epitome of it's gonna be uh, you word. or it's gonna be me. Got you, got you. Heard you. I'm getting uh, off this train. Word, word. <laughs> I'm going to try. You just had like a Liam Nielsen. What's his nigga name? Liam Nielsen. Yeah, yeah what's his name? <laughs> I possess a certain, <laughs> certain kind of skills that I can develop. It. <laughs> it's me, aren't you? It's, I'm serious. Damn. But I'm getting off this I'm show. getting off. <laughs> I'm just preparing just in case. I know you got some movies coming up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they, might, they, man. Man. Cut. they might need a, you know what I'm saying? They might need an evil guy. Um, so, so how is Nickelodeon for you? How is that experience? It was a real process, you know, because mm -hmm. I think Nickelodeon uh, signed me to a development deal at like 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So I had a record deal and they were developing a TV show around me. And at the same time, I was doing the show on Nick Jr. called The Backyard Again, mm -hmm. which was like a huge show internationally. Huge. Right. Yeah. Um, so there was all these big meetings. It kind of felt like uh, the corporate swoop up, you know, what I'm saying. And I, it was it was a really interesting thing to finally, you know, be in a position where. You know, I knew that I was gonna actually be on TV in multiple different shows, and 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 um, you know, they they kind of fostered my career from a very early age. At that time, because of the movie August Rush, I also got a three picture movie deal with a Warner Brothers. At um, what age? At, at, that was at thirteen. And, and so like, there was like this big moment with like corporate structures kind of saying like, we believe in your talent. We know that there's something there and we're going to build something around you. The writer's strike happened. I had three years where I couldn't do anything. No movies, no TV shows. The strike because, was for three years? Yeah, the strike was for three years. Wow. So mm -hmm. from, 
you know, I want to say 13 to 15, uh, there was just kind of a bit of a lull and uh, they, they, they found a show um, and it was done by uh, this executive producer, Dan Schneider, who did like all the big shows at that time, Keenan and Kel, mm-hmm. iCarly, you know, just, just huge shows. Um, so I was really looking forward to 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 being on one of his you know shows because Keenan and Kel for me as a black kid watching yeah, that was it. you know kids kind of look like me yeah, you know yeah. kind of be goofy and fun was just so tight and um you know Dan really opened uh you know opened his doors creatively and 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 you know let me kind of be on one of his biggest shows Victorious which I I got to work with a young Ariana Grande and and just kind of be around like the the who's who of like who was gonna be next in in a young Hollywood at that time. And uh, moving my family from New York to LA to to pursue that you know so three 16, season arc at yeah. sixteen sixteen you they, the, the fam come with you yeah the whole fam they the, I mean and you know the network knew that I was based in New York and we're, we're we're willing to put something in my you know contract to make sure that I can move my family with me because I needed that you know you can't move to Hollywood at sixteen in that situation and mm-hmm. not be corrupt so I was like <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I needed my family bro right. like yeah. we need we need some home cooked meals and some strong hey. discipline you feel me sixteen <laughs> years old some money in my pocket yeah nah yeah. I was about to go Out insane bro like yeah. insane I had other friends who were roommates you know no parents around like they would definitely have a it. lot of fun yeah. Yeah. out of control so, yeah. so when you yeah. get these you you have this three picture deal. Yeah. You got this TV show. Mhm. What do you buy? Yeah. Did you cuz you, did your mama let you touch some of the cash? I'll be completely honest with you. I was a very humble kid. The way that I looked at it was, you know, my parents had sacrificed so much of their personal business. They were running a very successful club day band at that time, which meant they were doing like huge weddings for billionaires and, you know, opening up for Shaka Khan and all these really cool people. Yeah. And they really put a lot of their stuff on pause to be able to, you know, travel. Like I did a tour in uh, Los Angeles and, and San Francisco with one of the Broadway plays and was doing TV shows and always had to fly. So my mom really put their business on hold. To chase you know, dream. I decided I was like, you know, anything that came in from this time period, yo, that's that's for y'all. Let me just take a a fifteen percent, you know, mark and just put that away for college or if I want to start a business at eighteen or nineteen. And honestly, I want to just kind of live below my means, you know, because I just saw a lot of my other friends, you know, they got they they little check. They was tricking and it, it was off. just like kind of got real, you know, mama his bands and his this and his that, and I was just like, I. I saw them also fall off after a certain point, you know, watch that Benz depreciate, like saw a lot of things happen that didn't really make sense to me. And um, I knew just also from re- doing some research, watching documentaries, like how I needed to move in order to kind of get out of this unscathed. Wow. Hey, bro. Wow. You know what? I'm clapping. Wow. I'm going to clap for that. Wow. Because you know, that, that's amazing for you to have that type of foresight to see, like, you know, I'm not the first one. That this has happened for, nah. and this is usually let's how it out. goes. Yeah, <laughs> let's see I, what happens. If I turn yeah. that route, yeah. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'll end yeah. up, you know, in, in in you know in a fucked up situation. Absolutely, you know what I mean? absolutely. So you know, at that time, you know, my mom was trying to start a couple different businesses. You know, I was trying to see how we could maybe you know pivot some of the money into some of the things she yeah. was trying to build as well as even for me, you know, saving money for my artist career as well. And, you know, I was really getting into production a lot because, I mean, they were putting me, when I was in New York, I, w- I was working with like Bob Power and Oak and Toby Gad and like all these yeah. really great songwriters and producers. Mm-hmm. And I really fell in love with the process of making music. So a lot of my money went towards like gear and stuff like that yeah. just to kind of like yeah. have something to kind of vibe yeah. you know yeah. and, and something that could kind of pay me back later on hopefully which it did and and um yeah that's, that's crazy. incredible that was just bro. a vibe yeah. that's, that's that's really really dope man because like i said people just don't they don't understand that this is truly a marathon it is a marathon this is truly a marathon mm-hmm. and, and i've you seen yeah. have to be able to survive it i've seen so much man and i mean I've also seen some amazing, you know, like victory stories, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. seeing people really get across the finish line and really be able to just like do what they got to do. I mean, me and Kiki, we started at the same time. We were some of the only like young black faces, you know, doing our thing. So, I mean, mm-hmm. to be able Kiki, to see her, Kiki, Kiki Palmer, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, Kiki yeah, Palmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, come on, come on. The Kiki me, Palmer, we need the you Kiki, Kiki Palmer, yeah, the for Kiki real. Palmer, yeah. But like we were in similar situations where we were really doing a lot of what we were doing to also support the families that were supporting us as well, mm-hmm. you know? Wow. Yeah, that's great. So, that's great, yeah. bro. It, it, it's just like, I'm, I'm a perfect example of what not to do when you get your money. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm perfect. I am the guy. So what did you do? They they knew was, better. What's going on? Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly what's what's what I did. Uh, um, first thing I did is, you know, went to strip club. Okay. It's the first thing I did. I ain't mad at you. Yeah. No, I I I became a member. Oh wow. All yeah. Right. So I would I would, you know, help the girls pick out outfits mm. before yeah. the club even opened. He thought he was Dollar Bill. Okay. Yeah. He yeah. thought he was Dollar and, Bill. And, 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 and in this place, because I had this money, mm -hmm. I was a guy. Right. I was sought after. Exactly. I went and got me a car. All right. Ben no no. Lexus 300. Okay. Platinum edition. There we black go. on black bubble eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I bought me a gun. <laughs> and I bought me a that gun. That makes sense, man. You still chill at the strip club a lot. I feel you, brother. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. That's literally where my boy just got robbed, man. The strip clubs are dangerous, man. Bought, <laughs> bought me a <laughs> firearm. Because they know you got cash. <laughs> For real, they know bro. you got cash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, right. just, just okay. let them know. Don't let the church. Yeah. don't let the church kid fool you. Come on, man. How long, did the, ca off. How long did the cash last? I don't know. Not that long. I um, feel it. Yeah. You know, the good thing. I, the good thing I had done is with my money when I when I was on tour with Genuine and Aaliyah, That's I cool. paid off all my bills. I mm. love that. So that was the first. Thing. My mama made me pay off all my bills. But then when I got my, you know, record deal advance. And and my publishing deal advance, that's that that's when it went left. That's when Frank the Tank came Frank out. Frank the Tank, I love it. And started getting active. I'm talking about Word. crab legs as big as your back. Right. Crystal. Yeah. yeah. By the case. Yeah. You couldn't tell. It gets me real. Nothing. It gets With real. no record huh? out. Huh? With no record out. No record out. <laughs> wow. No record. I was I was I was uh I was a thousand air background singer. <laughs> I was a thousand air back with a record deal. With a record, listen, I had, yeah. I had what? I had like, like about two fifty on me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. In ninety eight, he didn't realize yeah. what that two fifty is. I didn't huh? know how they wanted, fast they wanted, it would move. They wanted everything for <laughs> yeah. that two fifty too. Ooh. Exactly. So I like you know that, and then moving to L A. Um, you know, with I think at that point I kind of blew the money. And yeah, LA is a trip. I had a thousand dollars when I first moved to LA, mm -hmm. and the same car. I still had the car. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring the gun. Um, That's a good thing. And nah, he probably shouldn't have brought the gun. Brought <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah. And I came with my MPC okay. and my XP80 keyboard, my Roland, and I figured it out. Listen, I said, so it's when you say investing in that gear, yeah. That's one thing I did do. I yeah. said, I'm going to buy this MPC. I'm going to buy this Mackie mixer. I'm going to buy these. Yeah. And I'm just going to, I'm going to work and I'm going to figure this out. I don't know where these songs are going to go. I don't know right. if they're ever going to come out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm going to know how to do this so that when the time comes, I'm going to be able to feed somebody. Mm -hmm. Hopefully yourself. Hopefully myself. Yeah. Absolutely. When you, so you mentioned when you first did the Nickelodeon deal, they also gave you a record deal. Yeah. What label? I was at a Columbia, Columbia mm -hmm. Records. So they had a partnership with Nickelodeon? Mm-hmm. They yeah. had a, a, a really good collaboration with them, and, and um, they, they, they had signed a bunch of people from, like, Glee and stuff. So, uh -huh. I mean, there, there, there was, like, an element of, of like, kind of trying to figure out how to convert a lot of the actors from some of their big, you know, shows into stars in music. Yeah. And, um... It was an interesting journey, you know, because it was their first run with this partnership, uh, Columbia Nickelodeon. So I was definitely kind of like, it, it, was, it was very experimental. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we it, it, was, it was really cool because I was able to do a couple songs that actually ended up on the show that I wrote when I was like 14 that, that uh -huh. ended up doing really well. It was my first time charting at like a very young age yeah. overseas mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, it just taught me the process of writing a song and like that 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 feeling of people singing something back that I helped write and co-produce was like- yeah. Are you nice. performing really special, those songs at that film. time? Yeah, I was performing those songs uh, on, the, on show. the show. Okay. And we were doing like big, big like I'm shows going, too. Y'all were touring we, too. Well, that's the thing. As, as a cast, we didn't all want to tour mm. because we were around a time when the song started becoming, you know, really successful we were like 17 you know 18 
listening to Frank Ocean, this yeah, and that, yeah, and it's like yeah. stuff for kids, and yeah. it started to feel like, okay, if we start touring now, we're setting ourselves up to be doing this for the next two and a half years, and specifically in this one market, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, Ariana and I, and, and, and even a couple of the other um, actors on the show all knew that afterwards, we were definitely trying to, like, take Do a stab else. at this music stuff in yeah. a very real way, yeah. and uh, we knew brand was a big part of it. Mind you, we missed out on millions of dollars, but <laughs> hmm. we also made millions of dollars after the fact by having a brand that was true to us. Yeah. So yeah. was there a Disney and Nickelodeon beef? Not at all. We all actually used to kick it. Oh, you didn't run up on Disney real. niggas? Nah. No. Everybody was like <laughs> kicking it. <laughs> you know, Dylan and Cole, Zach uh, and Cody. Yo, Mickey Mouse oh, ass. Cole, like, <laughs> yo, everybody was just vibing. I mean, we were all young and this was essentially like our high school, you know. Okay. All yeah. of us were homeschooled at that point because we yeah. had full time jobs to the point where our schedules were insane. Um, so it was really and Y'all understood each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, those were the kids who got us, who kind of understood sure. what we were going through at that time. For sure. You know? Yeah. And so now, as your movie, TV, all of this has landed, what is your progression musically that gets you into this, you know, 17, 18 year old? I mean, for you, it's like a grown space yeah. where you're like, I don't want to chase the Disney sound or the Disney thing. Yeah, I can't Nickelodeon. Do that. Nickelodeon. My, my apologies. Respect. My apologies. Nah, nah, it's all right. No, it's all no, good. We're not chasing that. I need to, you know, as you're listening to Frank Ocean and yeah, these guys, yeah. you're like, I need some of that. Yeah. What is that progression like? And are you still with Columbia yeah, to do I'm, that? I'm still with Columbia at mm-hmm. that point. Um, and they set me up with a life-changing session. They sat me down with Babyface. Mm. And growing up, like, listening to Babyface was everything. Like, my dad's a huge fan. All of us. So, like, and I was a huge fan. So, like, to even just just to be in the studio with him was like such a blessing and he really took a liking to you know what I was doing as an artist and you know really opened his doors he did something that I don't think I've ever seen any other big producer do for me which was open his doors and say you can use this 24 hours a day just like keep making great music and and you're good to go and gave me a room that I could just kind of vibe out with there was younger producers there that uh, I ended up working with a lot there's a a producer Chris Riddick Tynes Mm -hmm. that I I started a production duo with called The Rascals Mm -hmm. and I mean I went from going there like once every couple months to like being there every day and being around the the elements of R and B that really made me even want to make music like mm-hmm. seeing like a, a Lionel Richie walk in or a Stevie Wonder do a Christmas record or you know just like like just to yeah. be around legends and giants you know yeah. to always feel humbled and know that like there's 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 more to it I didn't go to a school for music so that was the closest thing to like class you know your face is like a it's like a Godfather yeah to so many people absolutely you know what I mean and he has. He has the space and the infrastructure and the information, you know what I mean? And, and he does not mind paying it forward by it's any beautiful, means. beautiful, man. Like, yeah. I, I played for him on a, he just called me out of the blue one day and had me play for him on a Christmas thing. That's dope. For this Christmas uh, uh, thing he was doing for these people, rich people in the hills that they mm-hmm. do every year and he performs. And He's like, I want you to sing a couple songs as well. That's fine. You know I mean? So, you know, by the time. I kind of over exaggerate anytime I talk about Babyface. So by the time the message got back to my parents, I was like, "Yeah, Babyface called me. He said I'm the most amazing singer he's ever heard in his life. <laughs> he said there's no way he could do this Christmas thing without me. Yeah, we uh, He said I, I played the piano very Beethovenish. Uh, he, word, just, word, uh, word. he thinks my fingers are magic. Um, <laughs> so all lies, pretty much. <laughs> <They're> all- <laughs> yeah, just like all lies. Okay, all right, all good, all good. But you know, he's he's that he he's that guy that you would you would love an approval from, that you yeah. would love uh, uh, some encouragement from. To yeah. ju- th- and yeah. that's going to fuel you to just do whatever. Absolutely, man. I mean, knowing that the underdogs came from under his wing as well. And Damon those Thomas. Like, yeah. Those were like some yeah. of the first guys that I actually worked with when I started doing R&B. Mm-hmm. Just kind of let me know that like I had a lot to learn from the source of mm-hmm. like where they even learned a lot of what they do from. And, and, and um, 
he really genuinely taught me a lot. And, and at that time, you know, I was really close with Ariana. I'm still close with her to this day, but she was working on her first album. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I'd thrown like a little party at the studio, you know, just real chill and played her some records. And, and next thing we knew, we were doing like half of her first album. Um, and I, I pulled Babyface in because I knew she was kind of doing like a 90s theme. Mm -hmm. And um, it just really worked out. It just became like a really cool mutually. Uh, we did like... I think four or five songs on that yeah. on that first album and it it went really well oh yes like, it did she went <laughs> crazy <laughs> she went nuts oh yes it did yeah, yeah, yeah. She kept it. oh my we're god we're up yeah yeah Garcon oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah who were who on that with y'all was it um, Face and, and Tony Face, Dixon Tony Dixon yeah. yeah and I mean Tony honestly I spent a lot of time working with uh, Tony Dixon man I, I really gotta guy. give him his flowers cause it's he's like guy. just an amazing producer yeah. and a good human and he would, he, he would always talk about the cautionary tales of being in R&B and all of the things that he's seen and I mean just kind of learning from from the experiences that he's been around mm -hmm. kind of helped me steer away from a lot of things that yeah, I, you know yeah. I didn't you know he to, was in the trenches know? with us absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, know. We were all in the I know I know it's funny man. you said that because he's he gave you his example of what he'd been around because Tony is a guy who kind of stands back and he watches observes and observes yeah, everything. everything that's yeah. going on. Exactly. So like Tony just wasn't the guy who was jumping in it. Exactly. He just that's just not his that it's not his thing. He'd be like, uh, Yeah, I'm gonna, right, get, I'm, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. I'm gonna get out of here, guys. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like, and but he's been able to move in this business mm -hmm. without being caught up. Absolutely. You know what I mean? In whatever situations. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there are a lot of them. He used to do this really cool thing. I mean, I only participated once or twice, but he would have like like once, I wanna say every couple months, he would he would do like a suit day where we would come to the studio, everybody be in suits, making music. I thought yeah. that was so cool. Oh, Tony, yeah, you got a suit day? Yeah. Come on, Tony, man, a suit, suit day. day. You got and a suit day, come, Tony. He's, he's, also, he's also a photographer now, my too. My boy no, would come clean. Too. I was like, all oh, right, bro. So yeah. That's where the money has taken you, Tony <laughs> yeah, Dixon. Come on, yeah. man, suit yeah. day was tight. Suit day was tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love so that's, that's also putting the young fellas on to yeah. something different. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, you we got to go to these events, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a big streetwear fan, you know what I'm saying? So it was fun to, you know, switch it up. Nigga, yeah. put out this suit. I got to call Tony. <laughs> yeah, you wearing suits now, Yeah, because yeah, 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 he didn't invite us to suit day. He Come didn't on, invite man. us to suit day. He know I got them suits. Come on, now. He know I got that gas. Yeah. He used to have them Steve Harvey's, them original Steve Harvey. Those Steve Harvey suits were awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. What? You Absolutely. No, I definitely agree. You know what's funny? There's this old <laughs> No, there's this old picture. It was my color purple. Um they they, they did the big premiere for the Broadway play. Uh -huh. And I I told my in, mom I wanted in, you were in color purple yeah. Broadway too. Yeah, okay. I did just color purple. Lion King, Lion color, King purple. color purple. Mm -hmm. Just, okay. just the top shit. Okay. But okay. but um <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The floss is real. Yeah. I yeah. wanted I wanted to be in a zoo suit, man. But the closest thing I could find was, was a Steve, Steve Harvey. Harvey. <laughs> so there's a picture of me. <laughs> I got it. In the Jacob, hat, bro. Please find. Jacob, pull it up. <laughs> Go to the car. In a Steve Harvey <laughs> purple <laughs> pinstripe suit. Listen, like, it, it was me, bad. It let was me bad. tell you something. It was a bad look for me, but the Steve Harvey suits are great. In but, but yeah, Steve's a, day. I was rough. Listen, listen. In, Steve a fly in, OG No, he's now. a fly dude. No, 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 that no, no, shit no, 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 was trash back no, no, in the no, day. No, no, no. Back then, it was no, not. No, yeah, it was trash. It was oh, not. Man. It was trash. It was, oh, no. yo, I'm not going to let you do this to Steve. I'm not going to let you do this to, Steve to, to my- Steve the guy now. Steve Ben had it. Super fly. Ball head Steve is, is fly. But I mean, Afro next level Steve hairline was, Steve was Afro crazy too. Steve yeah. was on to that something. He had his own line, Jay. He had his own money. His own line, Jay. That's how old he was. I walked into a warehouse, yeah. nothing but Steve suits. Yeah, man. I picked so out like is, six of them. This is personal. This is personal. It really and is, I'm telling you why it's personal. Oh, what's up? Because those were the part of the closet that I told him he had to burn when I started oh, managing Oh, word, him. word. The six Steve Harvey suits was in there. You didn't have to tell him that. See, this when? is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I held on to the suits a little too long. It's all okay? right. It's okay. You know? But Appreciation they, for the OG. They I had sentimental value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I Steve get it. told me personally. Right. These suits are for you. Man, you could have fit a 20-inch rim into one of them pants legs, man. Wow, wow. That's how we was wearing them back then. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on. I don't like the disappointment on some of y'all faces. Like this is <laughs> Oh my god. This is how we was trapping back then. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Hey, you, know? you could definitely have an AK-47 <laughs> in, in one of the legs. <laughs> 
<laughs> Definitely trap it. Right, makes sense. Yeah. Um, you just started listing credits, man. That, that, yeah, that, that first got out incredible. of control. Um, you know, just starting with the Ariana Grande. You know, of course, you know my good friend of ours, Harmony Samuels. You man, know, shout out to you, him, you, man. You sharing company with. He's yeah, a great that, one, man. Y'all did, something, y'all did something. Y'all did something. He's a legend, yeah, y'all did bro. Something special. Yeah. So I, I, I would, I would, I would like for you to, if you don't mind. Yeah. Just, just, just start listing some of some of the credits if you don't. If you okay, don't cool. Worked on, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it started with Ariana, mm -hmm. um, and then I think you know we really went through a nice R and B moment. Um, mm -hmm. So then I think from there it was like LMA, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Chris Brown, uh, and then you know Drake has been a really big one. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Let's stop there. Let's go back. Um, yeah, yeah, because you have, you have multiple records. Let's go back yeah, to the Drake. Yeah, you produce Drake, multiple Drake, records. Drake has that. definitely been, yeah. been uh, an amazing addition. Could you name everything. those records? Those Drake records? Yeah, yeah. Gold Roses. Yeah. Um, on, I did Pipe Down. Pipe Down. In the Bible. <sighs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, certified so. levels. Certified. Yeah, certified. Certified. Yeah. Where did y'all where did y'all record that? Y'all in like the Bahamas or somewhere so, else? So right? yeah, so that whole story was interesting, man, because. All right, so Love All, which is one of the records I didn't name, um, was one of the first <laughs> songs that uh -huh. that we Son did. <laughs> Edition of Forgot. I forgot. Did. Sorry, so many. My mind. Uh, my, mind. <laughs> my mind. My mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but that was one of the joints we did um, a while ago. Hold on, let's go it back. Was like, I'm, I'm it was sorry. like the first song. I'm that, sorry. Let me start you back at the beginning. Yeah. How do you get to Drake? Boy Wonder. I got a shout out shout to my boy, out, boy, boy my Wonder. Brother. Boy Wonder. Boy oh. Wonder. Boy Wonder is definitely easily one of my, you know, biggest mentors right now, especially because, you know, I'm, I'm I'm working with him very closely on a lot of big projects. Mm -hmm. And um, Boy Wonder just kind of, he just took a liking to, he's to, one of the nicest to Chris humans and I. And yeah, yeah, he's just on the like planet. so nice, He's one man. of the nicest humans on the planet. Love Boy Wonder. And he yes. just, you know, started working with us. And, you know, he was working on a management situation around that time called mm -hmm. Isla Management. And, uh, you know, shout out to Simon and, and uh, EK. They, they they came in and, and offered us a deal to start working with them. And they're very connected to Drake and his whole team. And, um, you know, that was after we did Gold Roses, kind of naturally just vibing with some of their producers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, over time, you know, things were being sent around to to Drake's team, and uh, "Love All" was one of the first songs that came out of it from the Certified Lover Boy album. And the whole album had leaked at first, so that was a part of the first batch of records. But he loved that song so much, and it had gotten so much um, love online from the leak. He he decided to keep to it, keep it yeah. and, and uh, you know flew me out to Bahamas to to kind of start cooking up some more stuff, and you know to really kind of be around him. And kind of absorb his energy and like who yeah. he is as a human mm -hmm. being yeah. made it really possible to then go back to LA and like start really right. crafting records that kind of matched his vibe, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was such a blessing, but a lot of it all happened in LA. But Bahamas was like more so research for me than yes. anything else. We made some music. And um, had you ever been before? No, it was my first time, okay. man. You know, I don't really travel for fun a lot. I'm a bit of a workaholic, and if I am traveling, it's usually for work. Yeah. So, but that was one of those situations where. I was working, but we were also vibing, you know. Yeah. And it was like during COVID too, so I was a little afraid of like doing too much. But we were definitely just chilling by the beach, kicking it. So it was, wow, it was okay. cool. Then, man. then you started to mention another, you know, another certified homie, yeah. super gifted. My name is Ty Dollar. You used, but you about to say Ty Dollar sign. Ty Dollar sign, yeah. yeah. Ty Dollar. I mean, he's like my monster, my brother. You know yeah, what I'm saying yeah. he's he's really held it down. And I started yeah, I playing him venture. some of my music. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I started playing him some of my music uh, early on when he was working on his album featuring Ty Dolla Sign. I was doing some stuff on that. And um, he just really took a liking to the music and always spoke so much power into what I was doing as an artist. And that was a really cool moment for me because a, a, a lot of artists, when you know they know that you're a producer or a songwriter, kind of like to keep you in that place. But mm -hmm. he always like let me know. Oh, we know. <laughs> he, he thought I was cold, man. He thought I was cold, so that yeah, was really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And and um, I was I was about to put my project out independently, you know, um, and you know I met with Sean Barron to to see if he knew any like A and R's that maybe I could hire for a little bit just to kind of get some things together and like put a good marketing team around mm -hmm. what I was doing independently. And he was like, "Listen, we got a venture we're doing right now, and 
you know, at that time, Baby Keem and Kendrick were like just dropping their stuff together, and I was mm. like, we've never seen that in R and B. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out like, to Sean Barron too. That's yeah, a good dude. For sure. What if that kind of happened, where you kind of cross pollinating, you know, both worlds and and kind of like creating a platform and and um, a, a bit of a cosign essentially mm -hmm. um, in the space? And I mean, it's it's you know proven to be pretty successful, man. And I'm excited to keep putting these records out because it it definitely means a lot to me. Being on stage is such a a big part of what I do. Coming from Broadway. So like I, I'm definitely excited to get out the studio a bit and get back on I've the stage. I've never seen you on. I want to see you on stage. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Would you, to see would you me rather have, if you had to choose, which you don't, because you're talented in all these spaces, mm -hmm. which one would mean the most to you? A number one record, a number one movie, or a number one TV show? I think a number one record. Yeah. Cause yeah, I've been on a number one TV show before. I think I think a number one record would be special because of just how much work I've put into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I was signing my first deal at thirteen. You yeah. know, I'm twenty nine now. You know, it's yeah, been a yeah. long time of like cooking up records and stopping and starting and trying to figure it out and and and, and surviving through production and songwriting and finally getting my shot right now just really means a lot to me. Um, and and knowing that I have fans who have literally grown up with me. You know, I I want to do that for them just as much as I want to do it for me because I know they've been rooting from the sidelines yeah. and I'm wondering like what's going on. That. You know, You're like so, I'm 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 really hoping for that and I'm gonna work hard for it. I'm, I'm I I love yeah no, that number one record is just That's because there's so different. many more things that are connected to yeah, that. It's just different. Yeah, and yeah. it's your story. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm a yeah. writer. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it's like, the it's the yeah. direct connection to you. It's yeah, it's, it's me. It's not a character. It's not a right. It's not it's not an ensemble cast. It's exactly not any of that. It's a direct line to you, my soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. straight. And your straight and, out your, there. and yeah. your true artistry and individuality. Exactly. Yeah, is, is through the music. That's it's really the only way you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And have yeah. that is to you know go the artist route with it. Mm -hmm. I just always wonder you know when you know we have triple threats yeah on the show mm -hmm. you know but don't like, get it twisted what? i definitely want to keep acting and, and i mean this is the year where i'm like definitely getting back to it I, i've just been like i wanted to approach acting on this next run with more tools like learning meisner like like just like really studying and like coming back with the ability to cry on command and and just do different what things is meisner? you know meisner is a, a technique in acting it's like a cousin to method acting and I think it's important now for me to really step into a space that's that's all encompassing. You know, like when you see Denzel play a character, you forget it's Denzel. Mm -hmm. You know, Robert Downey Jr. specifically, you forget it's Robert sometimes. You know, and and I want that ability to kind of dive into characters and that's in, in a deeper name. level. Um, I don't know exactly what they study, but I just know that it's just a, a style of acting that, yeah. that, that I've just Because method kinda, acting is literally you coming in, in as it. that character. You're coming in as that character. It's, it, right it's now. Not, it's not you that, can't get but out it's of it, just right? the it's just the art of being, you know. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the art of being because I think there's so much thinking that goes into acting, and and I feel like just kind of listening more is like a big thing that I've always struggled with in acting um, mm -hmm. because I'm I'm so line focused and worried about my faces and what my body language is doing and things like that. So I think now it's just like being, you know, mm -hmm. and, and genuinely being in that scene and. and and just not being afraid to fuck up and, and just have more fun, you know? But Meisner's pretty pretty next level, so I'm still learning, you know, still getting it locked in, but that's one of the things I've been trying to just kind of, like, put in my pocket so I can come through and, and go crazy. Have you, have you studied Meisner? I got a crush. Hmm? Have you studied Meisner? I have not. You need to study Meisner, Tom. I, 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 you know? I, 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 it's I, a book I have away. A of, I have a lot of great... It's a book away. Get I have a lot Meisner, of... Dog. The, the book is going to kill me. <laughs> um, I have a... You know, I have a lot of great methods that I yeah, use to, yeah. to approach my acting. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but I, brother, I, he's amazing, man. I've, I've, I've studied a lot of work, the greats. Man. Yeah, you he's, know? See, he's in your work. I, you've seen. Oh, he's in your work. I'm tight, man. Okay, I mean, you know, I mean, you talk about TV One, <laughs> BT. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> VH1. And I'm, I'm, Den I'm Denzel over there, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Denzel over there, baby. How love you I mean, love man. it. I love you it. You know? Man. But I, mean, I, just, man, I, just, I just finished a movie, um, which was a uh, real, really cool movie. That was cool. And um, it was uh, the, it was the cool. It was directed by Robin Givens. Oh, wow. Which was really cool. Hell because yeah. she's an actor. Absolutely. Like, 
Thespian. That's thespian. Mm-hmm. Word. Like her choices are infinite. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so we had been in a play together uh, uh, many moons back, but mm-hmm. this was different because she was actually, you know, it's it's hard to know if a great actor can can lead mm-hmm. actors into great acting. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. every, every great player ain't a great coach. Right. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? They, they right. don't necessarily have the gift of distributing information. And not correctly anyway. You right. know what I'm saying? And yeah. that journey was crazy because it's like, as I'm dancing and in, in, in into different choices, and here comes this other really cool perspective, like, oh, I didn't mm-hmm. think about that. But you have yeah. a director who understands, like... And can also show you an example can, of what no, they're no. thinking. And, yeah. and I was getting there. It can <laughs> show you, like, think, think, what do you think about here? What do you think about being right here? Like, just, right. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. I yeah. like that. Let's do that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Now it's play. Like, now you're having fun. Now it's bro. a vacation. Yeah, we having a good time. Now we now. having a good yeah. time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. And so it's like, when you right. say that, I understand what you're saying and just getting, um, and just completely existing in the space. Exactly. Exactly. No over, no over anything. I'm just, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm him. Straight up. I was crying on set too. I was, man, Come I was on, like, man. let's get my cry on. Listen, it's At one a point process. I didn't even mean to cry. I just started crying. She's like, <laughs> the, the DP was like, you gave us tears on that? That's how you feel? I was like, I didn't mean to. I was just, <laughs> listen. It's just weird, weird. It's a thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. And I think, you know, yeah, hey, man, your own movie, you doing the soundtrack. I mean, it's unlimited for you at this point, like with the way with the way content is needed. Absolutely. And there's so many different platforms now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I, I've actually been working on a couple of different scripts, um, but I God feel like my first yeah. step out in mm-hmm. that space, producing and writing a script, I just wanted to be right. Of it's got to be good. Of course. Especially because in, in music, I spent a lot of time making sure that everything that I was a part of, mm-hmm. especially early in the process, was good i mm-hmm. want to do the same thing in the world of hollywood when i'm also behind the scenes yeah and um you know for me it's just been about like asking questions mm-hmm. you know just like talking to people that i know who have really done it at a high level and and just really get into to the process of it all you know and that takes time well let you me know? give you some encouragement some encouragement to not change your process but maybe to speed you up let's go you are good appreciate you man right now yeah. You yeah. are really good. Thank you. So whatever you produce, or, whatever you write, mm-hmm. it's going to be good. Damn, thanks. <laughs> well, shit, I'm it's, excited. It's going to you be know, good. It's a process, but yeah. You know, I'm no, it's for yeah. sure, it's a process. And yeah. understanding the inner workings of that process, like yeah. that's the homework. Absolutely. That's the foundation of the thing. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going a, I'm just, I'm to a just speed you up a little bit and let you know I you're good. That. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. Let's go. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> it's definitely happening. It's definitely hey, happening. I feel a bit premier like I'm telling you, that's my nigga. I'm telling you. Like, hey, <laughs> I told I'm, him, man. I'm gonna try to find me a purple zoot suit to wear to the motherfucker too. Going, I'm, 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 I'm gonna call what? Steve. Where the suit says, Steve? I guarantee you, he's burned all of them at this point. Oh yeah, no, he's he, way too fly. For no, that no, now. no. He different now. Yeah, yeah. yeah he I acting mean, up. Super fly. Yeah, no, he yeah, acting yeah. up. Super fly. He's he all the way. He custom. He tapped all the way. He Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't like his attitude. Too. He, yeah. he, 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 I think he saw me make the change, and Word. then he was like, Word. Oh, inspired by greatness." That's what you're doing, Tank. <laughs> I've lost one of the disciples. I've lost one of the disciples. <laughs> I gotta get. So, so, Yo. so, right now, today, what is your focus right now? What are you working on? Well, I'm dropping a new album, and I feel like so what's the title of that album? Electric Dusk. And Electric dust. Mm-hmm. I'm visualizing that. Yeah, so say. it's it's um it's based off of this driving movie theater that's out here in uh, California, and while I was making the album, I was watching lots of film, um, and I would have it silent, and then I would have the subtitles on, and I would try to use like different like lines and inspire different records, and you know I felt like attaching a space that I came from to something that I love so much yeah. was like a really important part of what I had to do next in music. And um, that's essentially what we're doing now. And we dropped three singles from the album already. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, 
I'm just so happy to see that my latest single, Breaking Point, is mm-hmm. making waves. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 getting to a point now where, you know, I was I was out for Grammy week and weekend and people that I've I've known for years were walking up to me like, dude. That last one, yeah. that last <laughs> one, brother, that was it, yeah. you know, like, and, yeah. and that's cool. That positive, you know, reinforcement for everything that I'm doing, you know, it, it just makes me feel so good because this is kind of like a big high school or college, yeah. as you will. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, people have been seeing me in the halls for a minute, but it was kind of cool to have that moment of like, you know, getting love from my peers and, and um I'm excited to, to really just keep going. You know, there's 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 records that haven't dropped yet that I'm really excited about. And, when does it drop? Um, so we're looking at an April date, but we'll see. Yeah, because for me, the way that I see the marketplace right now, I think relevance, buzz, and engagement are really important things. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's a big thing that I've just been like really working on is just content and building with like the new ways of like marketing outside of the traditional forms that I was kind of used to early on. I mean, from 13 years old to now, a lot of things have changed in the mm-hmm, music mm-hmm, industry, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just kind of collaborating with, you know, different forms of, of uh, marketing from some of the guys who are streaming and going crazy, you know, understanding that, you know, doing podcasts and like really tapping in and doing as much content on TikTok as possible, you know, is really going to put me in a position to, to actually win like I want to win and, and tour like I want to tour. So yeah. we're just building building that story and that engagement with the fans. That's dope. Yeah. Are you acting in your videos? You know, I think these first couple music videos, I had all of these elaborate plans of it being this like big film and had sad scripts written and this and that. And then we got these budgets. We was like, oh, word. Like, <laughs> like, oh, word. Oh, okay. Uh, inflation. I said inflation, inflation somebody. Okay. Inflation. It. Okay. All right. Well, um, we just going to vibe out. <laughs> we just going to vibe out. <laughs> just just gonna turn, turn, your phone turn your phone on. Turn your phone on. We're going to play the song. We're just going to. You got some red cups? You got some cups? We're going to some red cups. Who's like, smoking? No, no, no. You, you, you know, smoking. Still you art. Yeah, we know Ty got the weed. Yeah, yeah. We know Ty got the weed. Exactly. Just yeah. smoke around me. Just, <laughs> we want to see you smoke. Then we're yeah, gonna I mean, shoot. We're gonna but, shoot it. Um, now nah, moving forward, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to more opportunities to do that. It's your, I mean, sure. I, it, it's clearly your your advantage. Yeah. It's clearly like you are able to embody, you know, your story. You know what I mean from from all angles. Absolutely. And most, most you know most people can't. They don't they don't have the gift. They haven't been. You know, blessed to, to 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 have started at ten. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. A, yeah. On that, it's stage. a huge part of what I want to do next. It's um, the collaborate, the yeah. marriage of those two things for you. Mm-hmm. It's like like the because the a lot of the plays I used to go on were musical plays, and mm-hmm. then even watching you know Tyler Perry and and and, and mm-hmm. what's our what's our uh, Jacarius Johnson Jacarius, yeah, yeah. and those things, and mm-hmm. um, and even mm-hmm. up at, uh, recently. Money long on stage, absolutely doing yeah. her thing and, yeah. and bringing her act or her theater, uh, her theater experience mm-hmm. into the musical world. Like it's an advantage that most do not have. Exactly, they don't have it. Yeah, and I, don't ha- I don't have that. Yeah, it's talk- definitely the bridge. I'm trying to. I'm hmm? talking to me with the right role. <laughs> Listen, brother, I feel you like could you could do, do your thing. <laughs> we just have let you, ever you tried be it, you. Bro? Like <laughs> you would kill it. Hey man, <laughs> you ain't scared of no camera. If we just At let all, you be like... you, we just let you do you. No, just let Jay talk shit. He right. gonna talk shit. Goodbye. We'll edit it later. Just let him we'll talk. Edit it later. <laughs> man, no, that's dope. That's really dope, yeah. It's man. definitely a big part of what mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to doing. I mean, even seeing Little Yachty's uh, recent album. Have you have you seen any of the music videos no. he just dropped? It's really interesting. It's it's very close to what I'm trying to kind of create for some of my next okay. stuff. And um, you know, as we build and, and and like really create this engagement with the fans and 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 just really grow the audience, it's going to be more and more possible for me to do it on the level that I want to do it. Mm-hmm. But I got to do the work. You can't skip these steps no, you speak know that. you really can't no, skip these steps and you know um everything i spend i have to recoup so i'm i'm very mindful of the fact that right now it's You've important been to like for a very long time, yo brother. let's just <laughs> let's just do the work let's do the work let's get out there i'm ready to do these tours i'm ready to do these videos and the ways that we can do them for right now mm-hmm. and i'm gonna save this money and even if i have to put my own bread to like yeah. make certain things happen on the scale i know they need to be on let's make it happen but I just never wanted to approach something and not give it its full yeah. potential. Yeah. You know. Love that. So seeing what Yachty did, that's 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 definitely the I'm checking that out. That's definitely the bar. Yeah. What yeah, is 
is definitely gonna watch it. who's featured on the album. So I got Todd Dolla Sign on there. You know, that's the bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Benny the Butcher. Ooh, and, yeah. you know, I'm a big Griselda fan being from New York and just like like the rapping style is fly to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that is it, my brother. It's me, and man. It's you. It's yeah. me. I mean, the collaborations that I do in music, are, this is, I have so many collaborations I've done with, with, with different artists. Um, but I always felt that on my artist journey, it was important for me to kind of stand alone on a lot of these records and let people know I can I can do this without a shiny feature like yep, you yeah. know it, it, sometimes it what is the song doing like if the song isn't great doesn't matter what kind of feature you have like what, what are you where, doing where are we are going yeah <laughs> what are we you got you got you got 10,000 people in the audience yeah waiting for your feature exactly exactly yeah no, so that's tricky. it's an important part to everything you know so what is what is your your musical process like? A lot of the producers watching right now, yeah. As you started listing, you know your credits, you know they kind of want to get into yeah. your VSTs. They want to know what yeah, you know what, yeah. what, what you're making that music in. What are you, what are you doing? What are you using? Well, listen, I mean, it's really it's transitioned over the years, but I think right now Logic has been just just the the main stage for everything mm-hmm. that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a big part of my process is something called Verispeed. Mm-hmm. And um, it's really using speed as a way to pitch things within my process. So when I'm playing guitar, sometimes I'll slow the beat down uh, six semitones and um, maybe 15 BPM. And then I'll play something and then speed it up. And then I'll play things around that in the regular speed. And then I'll sing something low and then I'll speed it up and pitch it down. And there's like all of these aspects of using speed within my process Mm -hmm. that now kind of turn everything that I'm doing into... I don't know, just like a, a very, a very different space. You know, it's kind of more like ethereal. You know, that's exciting. Yeah, it's really cool. I feel like the the v, the VSTs I'm using, um, kind of vary, but Arteria is like you know my main stage for a lot of my synths. Mm-hmm. But I've been getting into um, a lot of vintage synths and analog stuff recently. What's the one you just said? Ar- Ar- Arteria, yeah. We got that one, right? Yeah, yeah. We got that one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the. Gonna pull that up when you leave. That's definitely, (laughs) yo. That's definitely it, man. Um, I've been using that for years, but Mm -hmm. once I actually started getting into uh, using the actual profit and Mm -hmm. you know the Moog and you know getting into like some of the 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 other sense, like it it definitely changed my perspective on on um, everything that I'm doing in hip hop because you know a lot of that noise and and, and even like the ability to twist knobs kind of gives a a different element to the creative process for me. And I'm more of a melody guy, so you know for years I was working with a production partner and he did most of the drums, kind of similar to how L.A. Reid and Babyface Mm -hmm. were like kind of operating back in the day Mm -hmm. and um you know so now even my production process now is kind of similar but now i'm collaborating with some of the illest drum programmers in the world um and and just kind of making these melodies happen and and you know writing some song ideas on top of it and seeing where it flows that's a really cool process that that you young guys are on right now yeah that you know that this new um digital world has made possible absolutely where you are make where People send me like, like, whether it be guitar loops, whether it be full 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 melody top where it's keys, bass, uh, string, all of that, yeah. or leave the drums empty, or they'll just send drums. Like mm-hmm. you guys are collaborating, yeah, in yeah. a way that is so crazy. Like a kid from London Absolutely. can send you some drums, and then you can get on top of it and do all your stuff, and then a guy from Israel can play yeah. guitar on it. Like that's. That is really amazing. Yeah, man. Yeah. The record um, that we did on Scissors last album, uh, Snooze, mm-hmm. came like the the original melody loop came from this kid that I was working with. Uh, I think he's based in Scotland, mm-hmm. and I'd been working with him for like six months, and we were doing a bunch of different ideas, and that chord progression was so tight. I was like in the studio, and SZA was there, and Babyface, and Chris, and you know we pulled it up and played some stuff around it, and added some drums, and. You know, SZA wrote a great record that's now doing really well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the kid wasn't even in the room. And yeah. and the thing is, is that there's there's so many elements of collaboration that are happening yes. right now through yes. text and through DM. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's just a beautiful thing to see that, that you know, everybody's so open to, yeah. to kind of build together. Yeah. What you about to say? Nah, you know, I'm looking at you. Uh, you looking at my piano? Look at it's just piano, unlimited, man. man. Yeah. It's at unlimited piano, man. how you can make music now. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Since it's so unlimited, right. here you go. We understand you got some 
understanding of where a lot of this music has come from. Come from and absolutely. You got artists that you love and you grew up on and producers and writers absolutely. that you know. <laughs> Leon, we just want to know your top five. <laughs> Your top five. <laughs> what we want to know. Top five. <laughs> Leon's top five. Oh. R&B artists. Oh, wow. Yeah. R&B songs. Who are they? Who are they? Leon's top five. <laughs> five. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Five. Yeah, Leon's top five. Come on, brother. That was beautiful, man. I think you drew it a little bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right. So my top five. That's R&B pretty easy. That's, that's that's super easy. Let's go. Um, Stevie Wonder. Ooh. If it's magic. No, no, no. Go, no. Go, go, go. Oh, oh, just, oh. Just, just the, the artist first. Just the artist first. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I like. No, yeah, I was about to just. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, if the yeah. artist in the song, you come to the R&B Money Podcast, you be ready like this, man. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Cool. So Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, um, Prince, shit, Michael Jackson. Damn. And then I'm a I'm gonna try to find a new school, D'Angelo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. my top five. Like yeah. straight out the gate. I'm just yeah. basing it off of what I listen to. You know, by the way. Yeah, ain't no, saying. ain't no way you not making good music. <laughs> ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> not with that top five. You have no choice. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Impeccable taste. Impeccable taste. Palette of the gods. Yeah. Man, appreciate you. Yeah. Now what? Now, now what about your song? What about your song? Now see the songs. I'm a, I'm gonna do some deep cuts, all right? Yeah. Um now, If It's Magic by Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. it's just one of those records that I just started going back to. It's very simple. It's just him and a harp just vibing out. Um it's out of control. But it's just so dope, like yeah. how he wrote that. And mm-hmm. and we have so many songs about about love and this was about life and I thought that was really tight. You know what I'm saying? Um Marvin Gaye, uh What's Going On, once again, mm-hmm. a record that like talked about life. Like things that were going on at his time, thought that was really special. Uh, Sam Cooke, uh, change is gonna come. Ooh. I felt like that once again was like Who talking about you? something, Who like really like man? taking us yeah. there, yeah. you know. A studied um, uh, young man, yeah. <laughs> and then this is a it's off the cuff one, but Prince he has this album called Dirty Mind. Of course, and like his record Head. Album called Dirty Head Mind. is one of my favorite Prince records because it's just nasty. Hey, you could tell <laughs> Prince was up there just vibing. You know, I, I feel like he yeah. was just at the crib going crazy or wherever he was. But he's like, probably at the crib. At the crib, yeah, at the the crib, crib. just yeah. vibing. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was really dope. Yeah. Um, and then Michael Jackson, Human Nature. Yeah. yeah. Listen, let me tell you something. That human nature, timeless. You, it's you can't get away from it. You really can't. Human nature has been in the top five. Yeah. For countless people who've come on the army. I mean, like, it's yeah. you know, Quincy says you know we're, we're we're always chasing chills, you know, and that's one of those records, <laughs> yeah. man. Like for the, the first chills, time you hear it, like stealing that, still, bro, yeah. like yeah. Yeah, I always get chills. Uh huh. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Special, man. Ah, okay. All right, you 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 you've dazzled me, young man. Hey, man. Is that I'm Greg filling games? Huh? Is that Greg filling games playing on I that I think record? it might be. He was playing a lot of those parts. I put nothing past Greg filling games. Greg is actually a really uh, good friend of Babyface. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how we he know. Would come, yeah. Bro, he would come by the studio and just like tell nicest stories. Guy. Like, nice guy. The stories, man, the were nicest amazing. Guy. Coolest guy. Yeah. Of all you know, he thought. That um, juvenile was saying, "Greg filling games, yeah." <laughs> I'm no lie. I'm <laughs> I'm 18 years old, and I'm in the studio with Babyface and Greg filling games, and he thought that they were saying his name or That's or back that ass up. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "No, sir." No, sir. Hey, yo. No, sir. I don't. I don't. I, I don't know, sir. Juvenile. But <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> yo. That's not, that's not, that's not. 
hey, no reason. My boy was wilding. There's no reason. <laughs> y'all will never listen to that record <laughs> the same again, though. There's Watch no the next scene, no y'all hear that song. Y'all be like, the same Billy Gay, yeah. <laughs> Greg, you gotta stop this shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's crazy. <laughs> this is out of control. I promise, the guy is saying Greg feeling gains. Yeah, it's right on the record. <laughs> I just never forgot that. Just, Yo, I that's never, fucking funny, bro. We gotta have him testify <laughs> on the podcast when he comes. Absolutely, there's a rumor going around <laughs> that Jay started. Uh, Jay started. That's great. <laughs> nah, um, that's okay, all right. all right, Leon. Okay, you think you you think you got all your shit together? All right, all right. what's up? Here we go. Up? We're gonna do a R and B Voltron. Uh, I don't know what that is, but let's go. Okay. Okay. Oh, like if we could get a like a band together. That's no, it's not a band. Hey, that's all right. I don't know, man. Okay. <laughs> Young Shit. man, young man. <laughs> Voltron was it was no, no, like it was, Transformers, right? No, it's not Transformers. <laughs> it was five lions. Oh, okay. Word, word. There were five machine lions. <laughs> Got you. Red, black, blue, yellow, word, word. and I said black, black, blue, yellow, red, and white. Was it white? Green, green. green. Wow. And they all were on their own lion machines, and everybody, Man. and there were five people that operated the lions. Okay, and they would go and fight evil all throughout the universe. Man. And then when they came against the big monster, they would form a a, a big lion, the big person, and look like a human being. Word. And face to all the lions, two lions with the arms. Got gotcha. another two lions was the arm, the, the, was the feet. Thanos, you know what and the middle lion was the body. It's not Thanos. <laughs> I know who both are. In the I middle line, yeah. the middle line was the body, All and right. they had a sword. They chopped the, anyway. Word. The Voltron is you putting your superhero R and B artists together. Where gotcha. you getting the vocal from, the performance style, okay. the styling, and the passion. Here we go. Who are you getting the vocal from for your Voltron? Transformer. Hmm. <laughs> the vocal from. I would say Jasmine Sullivan mm. right now. Yeah. Right yeah. now, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yep. 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 All right. I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Performance style. Performance style on that stage. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would have to say Prince for sure. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Absolutely, because he takes from everybody. Fred Astaire, James Brown, and he's also playing all those instruments. Yeah, if I could get that with the James Jasmine Sullivan voice. Okay. Uh, who, what oh, else? Yeah. All right, what else? That's how you feel? <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, styling. Styling. Steve Harvey. The drip. Huh. Just the disrespect. The drip. Steve, I love you. That's interesting. Because mm. R&B has went through some waves styling-wise. I'm trying to think who's mm. really been consistent. Um... You know what? I'll say somebody who's been consistent through multiple generations, Beyonce. Let's go. Wow. I really Always feel like I'm fly. trying to just build wow. yeah. build a real strong move here. Like Let's go. You, I like I like yeah. how you yeah. build. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> all right, young fellas. In the fella. words of Glorilla. You, all right. Watch yourself now. All right. Okay. Uh, the passion of the artist. The Ooh. heart of the artist. Passion. The umph. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's James Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does it yeah, feel that's good? Does it sound good? Does it feel good? Does it feel good? Passion. Does it sound good? Passion, because half the time we didn't even know what the fuck he was talking about, bro. Yeah. So like, And we didn't care. But we didn't give a fuck because of the passion, bro. Yeah, yeah. We really cared about like how he delivered it. He said chicken change. Word. Chicken change! <laughs> Word. <laughs> what? No idea what it means, but like, yo, it felt good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Don't do no damn squealing. No, do no. You, you heard him. You heard him, <laughs> but you heard him. You though, rappers real. heard him. You, you rappers heard him. <laughs> and sampled he, he it 95 times. Don't do no yeah. damn squealing. Yeah, for real. There, there will never be another James Brown. Ever. 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 Yeah. He, he had special. too much in the bag. Too much in the yeah, bag. Yeah, too much in the bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. And he's dancing at this whole time, too. Absolutely. 
Mm. Yeah. Party. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Just snap. James Brown is a genre by himself. Bro, yeah. I watch James Brown's live shows at least once a week. As you you gotta should. just pop them up As on you YouTube. Who could do a verse against James Brown? Nobody, <laughs> bro. It's too he's, aggressive. Because then he'll start playing his samples against you or some y'all. shit, right? Yeah. It's too aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's too much, bro. And it's way too many hits, too. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm but mad. I think it would be interesting just for like if you know if they were both alive at the same time, just like him and George Clinton doing oh, a fake versus. Sick. You know what I'm saying? That but like, it would be kind of crazy because I think they have a lot, a lot to pull from. But it's it's it's, it, no. it's tough though because nah, you still hey, have the. Hey. I say no because you're it's, right. It's two it's two different eras of Sonics. That's right. That's right. What's gonna happen when George Clinton come out in the diaper? No, I'm just saying the Sonics are completely different. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's hard. That's hard. You're right. Like yeah. George would have to go against like, yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire or something. Or that's something. right. Like, that's like, right. Gotta, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Like James it's just it's has James battle. has his own genre. It's he hard does. to put him against. Not somebody. Somebody. But, he had, but they have their but, own too. Parliament Parliament, Parliament Funkadelic got their own. We're too, sure. Though. Yeah, but they the were definitely is, children yeah, I mean, like, of like James's. You know, like they got into vibe. that. They yeah. got into them them sounds and yeah. analogs. Mm-hmm. And them, like they yeah. started digging in a different kind of crate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, Bootsy used to play for James. Right. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. that to me felt like well maybe and the maybe Isley there brothers. was something there, mm-hmm. you know. And the Isley brothers. Mm. Hmm. Bootsy comes from the Isley brothers. Yep. Bootsy a bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker. Yeah. Um. I like what you're doing, Leon. I'm just you know I'm just letting you know that. Yeah, yeah, thank you, my brother. I like man. where you. I like I where your mind that, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, 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 your musical mind lets me know that you're gonna be doing this for a very long time. <laughs> I know this. That's for the a game fact. plan, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. hang. We got something else though. What's this, man? We got something else, man. <laughs> something about your travels in this music business, shit, man. You know, you know, you've been in this for a long time. Absolutely. You say 13, 10? Which one which yeah. one you started? 10? I started at 10, bro. 10. Yeah, 10. Huh? Yeah. Broadway. Strong, strong 19 Broadway. years, man. Huh? You know, I can't really see past the lights. That's what yeah. Broadway do to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see the front row. <laughs> you don't know who passed the lights. What? Yeah. That nigga sound like you about to say, giving up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to do. <laughs> I ain't saying no names. Hey, I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no name where you was, who you was with, what you did. Don't say shit. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. Yeah, take this there, brother. You got the chords. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. So this segment. Yeah. Oh, what's up? What's up? It's called I ain't saying no names. Oh, uh, okay. When you tell us a story, <laughs> All right. funny or fucked up, okay. or funny and fucked up, mm-hmm. All right. mm-hmm. the only rule is mm-hmm. just can't Leon, say Thomas Leon Thomas cannot say no names. And I okay. just said both of your names because you got two first names. Yeah. All, right. All right. Is that two last names? What you got? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> you could be Thomas <laughs> Leon, too. Thomas You could be Thomas Leon. Hey, I like Leon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be hey, Thomas Leon, that's too. A good, Thomas Leon came through here, man, and shook this oh, the whole thing word, on fire, man. Word. This shit got crazy. Yeah, no, you, you first and last, or you're you last and first. Either one. All right. Just don't say theirs. Okay, got mm. you. So this is... Uh, no, fuck all that. Are you ready? I'm ready, yeah. Ooh. This is Leon Thomas. Leon. 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 The victorious man himself. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. The Lion King himself. Mm-hmm. Come on, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> Show up as the color purple. Come nah. on now. <laughs> this is his, I ain't saying no names. Okay, so this was my first ever production session with a really huge artist. Mm-hmm. And they get there to the studio. And we're working hard on the record. We finally get to the point where they're about to record. And while they're singing... They'll stop, and all I hear is, <laughs> they start doing push-ups in between every take. Dang. And I was like, man, no this <laughs> is this is something else. But I'm talking about like intense push-ups, man. Yeah, like, yeah. Throughout the entire session, um, we had to cut like breathing out of some of the some of the fucking Shit. lines. <laughs> but Middle like of the it's, lines, though. yeah, just really I just like going, going. And I was like, wow. And it was my first time ever, like, you know, 
producing, you know, a big artist. And man, it was definitely different for me, to be honest with you. Yeah. But it was kind of cool because it shows, I mean, that fitness journey, you know, it matters. You feel me? Might take some hints. I like that. Of course you do. <laughs> this is about to be his new I shit. Might take I some, like that. I might take some hints for sure because I was, I, I was intense. Hey, listen, because after about, you know, you have to get to 25, 30. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you got to do after that. And but the the crazy thing is it actually opens up the vocal cords too though. It opens up when you doing your push ups and shit, it opens up your voice. That's you know a what trip. I mean? Because you're push you're pushing through, you know what I'm saying? It's exercise. I was just doing it to make sure. You just, just wanna be titty gotcha. titty. Okay. Yeah. This nigga out here just wanna make sure he, get right. he can take his shirt I off. I just want my chest to be right, got you. Glistening. Never Everybody know. not taking their shirt off at the show, man. Hey man, you know. Why not? Why not? <laughs> We're going to sell Come something. Come on, man. I'll Come tell you on that. now. We're going to sell something. I'll tell you that. Oh, Melodies or titties. You're going you oh, go, to enjoy one of them. You understand what I'm saying? Or Come both. on, OG. Or both. I or love both. it. I love or it. Or it. You playing with you, motherfuckers? <laughs> yeah. For real. Leon. Yeah. What's up, my brother? Thank you, man. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um, for real. Thank you for, for representing, man. You know man. what I'm saying? Thank you for just like you know, everything about you is solid, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. And you could have taken your music in a whole bunch of different directions, mm -hmm. but you stayed mm -hmm. true to this R&B thing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you had, you've had the opportunity to go to other genres of music mm -hmm. because of what you, what you worked for and were afforded mm -hmm. by being in that space. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You could have clearly been like, yeah, yeah, I'm about to go do. And took this, um, this immense and amazing talent that you had mm -hmm. and took it somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But you stay true to R and B, bro. Man. And we commend you for that. Yeah. Man, thank you. I mean, it's a genre that I love, I grew up in, you mm -hmm. know. And um it's a it's really the art of storytelling, mm -hmm. you know. So I I genuinely want to continue to do R and B yeah. and find new ways to add some of the elements that I've taken from some of the other genres I've worked in and mix them in. But yeah, R and B is always gonna be be home base for me. Yeah, we thank you for that. And, right. and listen, thank you. R and B Money, R and B Money Podcast is always home for you. That's love, man. So, Thank you so much for sharing your platform. Yeah, I absolutely. appreciate Whatever you need from absolutely. us, we, we, we show up. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. We show up and for we sure. cheer. For real, man. We Thank support. You. Thank you. Likewise. It, yeah, it's 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 about it's it's about continuing to 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 re establish, maintain that bridge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's important that we are all connected. Absolutely. It's important that, you know what I'm saying, that the things we've learned and and whatever fuel we have to feed into you to keep this thing going at a level that we do that. It is man. important for us to do that. Man, I I really appreciate it. I mean, obviously I've been a fan of y'all for a long time. Yes, sir. You know, so I mean, just even being here and kicking it. I mean, we've met a bunch of yeah. you know, a bunch of times in the past, but you know, this really means a lot to me. So thank yes, you, sir. man. I appreciate Absolutely, it. Absolutely, bro. I like that. Yeah, it's love. That's a young man right there. <laughs> yeah. Remember uh, your grandma would say, see, you know that nice young man, that shit? You should be more like him. That's who you should be like with your raggedy ass. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the R&B Money Podcast, the authority yeah. on all things R&B. His name is Leon Thomas. His name is Leon Thomas. His name is Leon Thomas. And he's a superstar. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Ooh, yeah. R and B, 